Arch Linux has long moved past being a manual only installation. For quite a while now, it's been shipping the guided installer called Arch Install. It's certainly not perfect, but it's definitely a lot better than it was when it first started shipping the ISO. But the manual install still remains an option for anybody who wants to use it. So considering there is this different option available, is it ever possible that Arch Linux should have an official GUI installation option? This might sound kind of insane considering what Arch is, but it's actually being discussed. Add a graphical environment to Relang. So Relang stands for Release Engineering. This is the project used to generate the Arch Linux ISOs. Now what's being suggested here isn't a GUI installer like Calamares, for example. That would be really cool to see, but it would require a lot of extra work to maintain and would need someone to actually step up and go and do so. And I can't imagine Arch ever shipping Calamaras. They'd probably want to go and make something themselves and it would start off really, really buggy and kind of just be a big mess. What's being proposed here is a graphical bootstrap environment. So rather than doing the manual install in a TTY, doing it in a terminal inside of a GUI. You might be thinking, well, why would you want to do that? If it's going to be the exact same installation, what is the benefit of a GUI? Well, one major benefit is access to an actual web browser. Now, the current Arch ISO does give you access to things like links, for example, and you can go and use a web browser in your terminal. The Arch Wiki works perfectly fine inside of it. The problem with this, though, is the workflow that it offers. So let's say you want to go and check a page on the Arch install, or just check some part of the Arch install. You need to go and open the browser, check the command, close the browser, run the command, and you need to go and check something else. Open the browser, check the command, close the browser, run the command, and do this over and over and over again for every single step. So the way that most people handle the Arch install is they use two separate devices. You have your install box where you're actually installing Arch, and then you will have a laptop or a phone or something else like that. But why should you need two separate devices just to install an operating system. But with a GUI, you don't have this problem. I can open up my terminal, I can open up my web browser, and they can both be open at the exact same time. The other thing is that a default TTY environment doesn't support scroll back. So it's not like you'd even just go and print the arch wiki to the screen and then scroll back up every time you need to check something. You would need a terminal multiplexer to do this. So shipping something like TMUX with the Arch ISO would definitely address this problem. It would also address the other problem as well. So you could have one half your screen be links, and then the other half be your regular TTY environment. But using a GUI does have some other benefits as well. The main thing being that graphically configuring your keyboard is easier than doing it in a TTY environment. The reason for this is because if you have a standard US keyboard, it's generally just going to work. And if you have slight modifications from the US keyboard, it's usually going to be fine as well. When you start getting into kind of like weird non-standard things, it's usually not going to work properly out of the box. And if it doesn't work properly in a terminal environment, you're going to get really weird results. Whereas in a graphical environment, you can just very easily fix it with your mouse. But it's not all positives. The main issue being that the ISO will be larger. So this might not sound like that big of a deal, especially when you consider the Arch ISO is only 800 meg, and especially compared to things like Ubuntu, for example, with a three and a half gig ISO, it's definitely much, much smaller. It's not as small as Gen 2, but there's not many distros as small as Gen 2. So the issue we have here is it's getting very close to a limit. That limit being the size of a CD. So a CD, the things you would store music on, not a DVD or a Blu-ray disc, which are much larger, is 900 meg. And if it goes over 900 meg, they'll have to go and change a ton of documentation that mentions the Arch fits on a CD. It's not a major deal. You can sort of search and replace it. But one of the benefits of Arch is that it's so small and you can even fit it on a CD. It sort of takes away one of those selling points. Even if you went with a really lightweight graphical environment with a window manager, 
your graphical environment would still push you over that limit. The window manager would be fine, your terminal would be fine, but you've got the X server, you've got your browser, and if the browser's something like Firefox, yeah, it's definitely bigger than the limit that's available, which is like 100 to 70 meg, depending on, you know, which version of the ISO it is. The size tends to change from month to month. You could reduce the size by using Wayland instead of X, but Wayland doesn't consistently work on NVIDIA, so that's not really a solution either. From a user perspective, I don't really think it's that big of a deal to drop the ability to install Arch with a CD. I don't know if there are that many people who are burning Arch to a CD to go and install it. There might still be some, but I don't know if there are that many that couldn't also go and upgrade to DVDs, or better yet, use a thumbstick like everybody else is using. The bigger issue is with the Arch servers. Hosting data isn't free. And unlike a distro like Ubuntu, for example, Arch doesn't have these giant corporate sponsors. It does have sponsors, but they're more like YouTuber tier sponsors, things like shells. It's not like, hey, we're sponsored by Microsoft or Google or anything like that. So any increasing cost is going to be a really big deal. Now, the way you should be downloading Arch is by torrenting it. There is that option on their website. That's the thing you should use. I get why some people don't because they just don't have torrenting set up or some people's ISPs just flat out block torrenting even if it's not something illegal. So the option does need to be there. Another issue is what about the graphical environment? Which graphical environment is going to be used? Choosing a graphical environment will involve bike shedding. There is always going to be people arguing about which GUI should be used. Should it be KDE? Should it be GNOME? Should it be DWM? Should it be XFC? Should it be XORG? Should it be Wayland? It's just a giant argument waiting to happen. In my honest opinion, it should probably be KDE XORG. That would be perfectly fine. I have no dog in this fight. I don't use KDE. I do use XORG, but most people use XORG. Just pick something and stick with it. But if they don't, it would lead to being, hey, let's include this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And it would just make the ISO ridiculously large or nothing would get done because it would be way too difficult to manage. And the last point I don't really think matters. It is unclear if this would improve accessibility or make it worse. In my opinion, it doesn't matter because if it makes it worse, then people who need the accessibility options won't use it. If it makes it better, then they will use it. It's not going to be like a forced option anyway, so it doesn't matter. The problem though is the existing solutions are a little bit over-engineered. So the one by the author is this. My proof of concept, they have a link to it here. I will leave this link down below if you want to check it out for yourself. So desktop environment KDE, perfectly fine. Terminal, cool retro term. I did a video on this a couple of years back. It's a really cool project that lets you have like a fancy looking terminal that looks like an actual physical terminal, but why not just use console? It doesn't need to look cool. Also the web browser Firefox, Firefox is great, but why not just use Conqueror? It's already a KDE application. Conqueror is not great for everything, but when it comes to looking at the Arch Wiki, it's perfectly fine. The other solution is even more over-engineered. So this involves having a bunch of separate profiles and a bunch of separate GUIs. So on a really powerful system, you would use GNOME, and if you need like special hardware, like multi-touch, things like that. And then on a medium spec system, it would be Mate, Plasma, things like that. And then on a low spec system, it would be DWM. Why do we need all of these? Just pick one of them. This would probably lead to a larger ISO than Ubuntu has, which is already getting to the limit of FAT32. But right now, nothing has been decided. The conversation hasn't been shut down by anyone. Nothing's been settled on for what might be done in the future. And the last comment was about a month ago. So if you want to get involved with the Arch Linux project, I'll leave this link in the comment section or description, whatever it is down below. And... Be sure to go and give your feedback. Now, don't give your feedback as in, I hate this. This is awful. Don't ever do this. If you're going to give feedback, go and suggest things that might be done. And maybe if it isn't a good idea, 
why it's not a good idea in a productive, helpful manner. But whatever happens, the manual TTY installation option is probably never going to go away. But I personally don't hate a GUI option actually existing. And if it did exist, I may even consider actually trying it. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think this is a good idea? Do you think it's a bad idea? Would you be open to actually bootstrap Arch from a GUI environment? Let me know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to Johnny Barapay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robs and Plays. My hair looks ridiculous right now. And... I'm out.